Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul, and this is the Cooler Master Gemin 2 S524 CPU heatsink fan. So for starters, let's take a look at some of the specs listed on the box. Of course, you'll want this to be compatible with your motherboard and processor. So for socket compatibility for Intel users, we have LGA 1366, 1156, 1155, and 775. For AMD users, we have socket AM3 and AM2. And also, according to this little sticker they added, also compatible with socket FM1 and AM3+. Here on the side of the box, we have a few additional specs. I did want to point out some information about the fan. Uh, your fan speed, it does have a four-pin fan connector. Uh, the fan speed is variable from 800 to 1800 RPMs. Uh, your airflow is 34.2 to 77.7 cubic feet per minute, plus or minus 10%, of course. Uh, down here, we also have noise level, which is 15.1 to 31.6 decibels, depending, of course, on the rate of speed of the fan. And finally, let's take a look at some of the actual dimensions. Uh, for instance, the width of this heatsink fan, or the heatsink itself, I should say, overall is 144 millimeters. Uh, also from the top, 144 square millimeters. And then from the side here, the important one is going to be your clearance, uh, because you will want to make sure you can fit your memory dims in. You get 47 millimeters of clearance for the overhang portion of the heatsink fan. So let's proceed with an unboxing here of the S524 Gemin 2. We have all of our mounting hardware here. We have a couple user's manuals. This one is smaller and uh, includes English instructions for installing your cooler. Uh, this one is bigger and includes the uh, same instructions but in a variety of different languages. Uh, here is the CPU heatsink fan itself. And uh, it uses a downward firing setup. So your uh, CPU contact plate is there at the bottom. It will sit on top of the CPU contact plate like that. The fan on top will pull air from this area outside in your case, direct it down through the radiator, and uh, will actually give you additional airflow over, for instance, the uh, VRMs on your motherboard, which uh, is particularly helpful if you're going with an overclocked solution or if you have a uh, a multi-phase power design for your motherboard because it will provide some additional cooling over there which can uh, keep your overclock more stable in a lot of situations. Also we have a heat pipe design here so con coming from the CPU contact plate down there at the bottom we have five heat pipes that proceed up this way and uh, this d give you the ability to, uh, to disperse that heat amidst the radiator there which of course assisted by the fan airflow. Uh, let me show you guys real quick the mounting hardware that they have included in this little baggie. This is the universal backplate that goes behind your motherboard. It's used for both AMD and Intel mounting solutions. Uh, these little brackets here are for Intel. Essentially, you just connect them to, oops, to the uh, side of the backplate right there, or the contact plate, and then these little screws are spring-loaded, and you can shift them forward or back depending on which Intel socket you're using. This is your AMD bracket right there. Again, just fits over there. You can rotate it so you can have different uh, configurations of this cooler on the motherboard and uh, align that to your whatever best suits your needs. Also, in this little baggie, you get an assortment of uh, these little rubber washers there to reduce vibration. Uh, you get a Phillips head to hex adapter, and that's to tighten down your mounting bolts. Of course, you get your mounting bolts as well as the screws that you need to attach the uh, brackets there to the heatsink fan itself. You also get a uh, little, little item there full of Cooler Master thermal paste. Uh, now, I did want to do one or two more things. Uh, I wanted to show you that the if your CPU is right there, this does have quite a bit of overhang, so make sure you have enough clearance under there, especially if uh, your memory dims might conflict. Here is a motherboard. This is just a, an X58 motherboard, but for example, if you were to install it right there, you do get some overhang here for the dims. So if you have dims with high heat spreaders, you want to make sure that you have enough clearance there. You can orient this differently, so you could point it that way. If you have additional clearance up above your motherboard, you can rotate it this way. Uh, if you have clearance over um, the inputs and outputs over there, you can also rotate it this way, uh, but Cooler Master does not recommend that because you could come into conflict conflict with uh, your discrete video card, for example. Also, I wanted to show one other little visual aid. This is a Cooler Master Hyper 212. This is a 
what is known as a tower style, style cooler. And just uh, for a size comparison there, you can see uh, with the Hyper 212, you get a lot more height, uh, but not quite as much width uh, for the width there. There's the uh, S524. And uh, again, you do get some benefits uh, either way uh, with the downward firing fan, uh, but there's just a quick size comparison for you guys. And that's about going to wrap it up. I did want to point out just a couple more things. You do get a four pin PWM fan connector there to plug the fan into your motherboard. And also that the fan included is a 120 millimeter fan, but there's also a mounting point for a 140 millimeter fan. So you can upgrade this fan to a larger size one, uh, which give you, will give you a little bit more airflow and a little bit better cooling overall with the Gemin 2 S524. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I am Paul with Newegg TV. This has been the Cooler Master Gemin 2 S524 CPU heatsink fan. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.